Hey guys, this video is brought to you by AerospacePal.com. We deliver free content tailored specifically to the aerospace community. Come check out the site. Hey man, we're here talking about lightning direct effects or just direct effects. D160 section 23. This being the most explosive and dangerous test for EMI. Direct effects is tested on externally mounted products by means of a high voltage and high current simulated lightning strike. The high voltage test will determine the attachment location for the high current test. The high current test will evaluate the damage due to the direct lightning strike. Now the purpose is pretty obvious, it's to simulate a direct lightning strike on products that are externally mounted on the aircraft. The category consists of four characters. The first two characters refer to the high voltage strike attachment test, and the last two refer to the high current physical damage test. XX denotes that the test was not run, while ZZ denotes that there is a custom test or test level run. The high voltage test can be skipped if it is obvious where the direct lightning strike will hit. The high voltage test setup may be run using two different methods. The initial leader or swept channel attachment test both accomplish the same thing. The swept channel attachment test may be run at multiple positions depending on the size of the EUT. The high current setup will look something similar to this, with your attachment point determined by your high voltage test if run. Your test plan should call out whether you're monitoring voltage or current on the pins of your EUT. Typically voltage is monitored unless it's locally grounded to the aircraft structure in which the current should be monitored. Calibration of the high voltage test will require foil over the EUT connected to the ground, while calibration of the high current test will typically require a dummy load to strike on so that your EUT is not damaged during this calibration. Now these tests should be run by trained professionals as it requires both expensive equipment and dangerous voltages and current. Once the calibration is achieved, the EUT will be placed in a simulated aircraft surface. The lightning strike will be injected on an unpowered EUT. For the high voltage test, inspect the EUT for a flash during the test and dielectric breakdown after. The arcing evidence determines the attachment point for the high current test. High voltage tests can also determine the adequacy of any dielectric material protection that you have on your EUT. For high current tests, the EUT is not expected to be fully operational after this test. Typically, the EUT should not create an unsafe condition, should not melt or combust, and should not create a high voltage seen at the EUT cabling harness. If your product has a specific voltage or current requirement for your EUT pins, make sure to specify this on the qual test procedure. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you found this informative, interesting, or just better than reading a 500 page standard, stop back at aerospacepal.com and tell other engineers about this free resource. Don't have a copy of D160? Check out the link below.